Good morning. Good morning. I haven't been here in a while. My name's Pastor Kathy. For those of you that are new and have joined over the last couple of months, I am one of the on-staff uh, pastors here at New City Church. Been here for over 31 years now, and um, I love our church. And we are, I am stationed at our Peachtree City campus, but I just told my husband, because I started here, I started back when we were in the little bitty building on the other side, I wasn't at Allen Drive, but I was back, in, and I turned to my husband and said, boy, this is home. Like, this is home, it's good. And so, if I haven't had an opportunity to meet you, I'd love to connect with you, and just wanna thank you for standing up against the spirit that just grabbed a hold of worship. It was like the enemy threw a blanket, and I'm gonna talk about that in just a minute. He threw a blanket on top of the service, and all of a sudden I was like, Lord, what's happening? Like, what, like what's going on right here? And all of a sudden I felt this, you know? But I wanna tell you, you guys got up on your feet and said, no blanket today. Like, uh-uh, you began to clap your hands and move up to the, and you're like, uh-uh, no blanket today, big boy. And I'm going to tell you, we're going to talk about that. Satan's got an agenda. He doesn't want people to hear the word of the Lord. He doesn't want people to worship God. He doesn't want us to grow in our faith and grow in our understanding. Does he? Come on, church. Come on, somebody. So I want to say thank you for standing up and saying not today and not in this house this morning. So I love the water. I, I love the water. I always have said, someday I'm going to have a house on the water. I have a house on the water. Anybody else love the water? Like I love all forms of water. I love rivers. I love lakes. I love waterfalls. But I especially love the ocean. I mean, I've had several conversations. Maybe you don't converse with God about where you want your mansion to be in heaven. <laughs> Maybe you don't. I do. I'm like, not that I want it painted a certain color, but I'm like, you know, if I could just be on the ocean, I just want to be facing somewhere with some kind of ambiance. How many of you know he's the ambiance? Come on, somebody, right? But I've also, I've always been fascinated by biomes of the world, like one of them being in the ocean. How many of you know there's a whole living group of things, but, but, but we can't ever see it because all we can see is the surface of the water. We never are underneath enough to actually experience all those living things. I mean, you can't just jump in there and dive down deep enough to get to it. You got to be able to scuba dive to get to that. But you know, you don't just get to scuba dive, right? You don't just throw that tank on your back and hop under the water and hope you're going to go find the Titanic, right? There's certification. You have to be certified in recreational diving, and then you need an extra certification for deep diving. And then you've got to follow the instructions. How many of you know following the instructions is a good thing? And disobedience to the instructions can be deadly. Like, it can be deadly. We have to be able to follow the instructions if we're going to get to a place of living holy and soundly, especially if you got your scuba gear on. You better follow the instructions. So on our first big cruise experience, I decided, you know what, I'm going to scuba dive one day. But I better start with something easy like snorkeling. Let me just, let me just start with snorkeling, right? So, so we, go, we go get on the little tender, and we're out away from the cruise ship, and, and I get my gear on, and I'm, I'm, I'm listening to the instructions. I'm listening to the instructions. And so they're saying, now listen, all of y'all just stay right around the ship. Just everybody stay together, right? Y'all just stay all in one little spot right here, and you'll be safe. And they said, you know, like, don't swim off. Stay in the group. Like, stay close to this little... Have I said that yet? Stay right here, close to the group, and you'll be good. Like, you'll be really good. You'll see some things, and, and it'll be good. And, and if you do happen to see something that scares you, don't thrash. Don't carry on. Don't conjure up. Stay still. Just don't move. But stay near the group. Have I said that yet? Get over here and stay next to the group. And then you'll be okay. Well, I get all my stuff on and I'm like, okay. 
but I'm the Royal Ranger Explorer. And I'm on a mission. I'm going to find the Titanic, right? So they're all swimming, my husband, everybody's swimming around the boat. And I'm like, okay, I'm just going to swim just a little bit this way. I'm going to swim just a little bit. But I mean, like, it's not too bad. Like, if I stay close to the group, even though I was told to stay in the group and with the group, if I'm close to the group, I'm close enough, right? And so I'm swimming a little long because I'm on a mission. I'm going to find the Titanic. I look up over my shoulder, and all them children are being obedient. All of them children are being obedient. And I'm like, you know what? There's no explorers in the group. I am the only explorer. And so I start swimming a little further and swimming a little further. And, so, and I pick my head up. I'm like, wow, there really are no explorers in that group. Like All them children are obeying. I am going to find something that I'm on a quest. I'm going to touch the waters over here and see what I can get myself into. And I'm swimming along. I'm just swimming. Like they're way over there. I'm swimming along. And all of a sudden, I see something. I'm like, oh my gosh, it's the Titanic. Now, in my small mind, I didn't realize that the Titanic is 12,000 feet below the surface of the water. I, my husband is the person that knows directions. I ain't know none of that stuff. I look over there, and I'm seeing like, it's a boat. Like, it's a ship. It's the Titanic. And if it really is not the Titanic, some pirate left it there. And I know if I can get over here close enough to where that ship is, but I'm going to find myself some treasure. Forget the fact that I'm being disobedient. I'm going to get over here, and there's something over here that none of them know about. Come on, somebody. So I'm looking. I'm really proud of myself. You know, just the explorer of the world. I'm over here. I'm looking. I'm looking. I'm like, where's the gold? Where's, I know there's some gold. I mean, I, I know there's got to be gold. And all of a sudden, out from underneath that ship come two long barracuda. I look down again. I'm like, I looked up. What do all godly women do when all of a sudden you are in a place where you're way far of anybody, way far out from everybody, and all of a sudden something's going to threaten to eat your white legs? Like, I know I am dinner. Like, I'm about to meet Jesus. There you go. Because they're swimming this way. What do godly women? The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. What am I doing over here being disobedient? Right? I mean, am I the only one? And so then what do I do? I turn around. I start swimming as fast. I'm thrashing. Buddy, I'm working those white legs that they're about to eat. I am thrashing it. I am getting over here. And then all of a sudden I go, whoa, maybe it's time to be obedient. Maybe since I'm about to be dinner, it's time to be obedient. Let me pause and be still. They said, stay still. Don't draw attention to yourself. So what do I do? I lay perfectly still. Now, that might work for somebody, but it don't work for people that have motion sickness because all of a sudden the water's going. And all of a sudden I get sick. I start, I start dry heaving. And I'm, I, then the next thing, I'm throwing up in the water. I have picked my head up. Ain't none of them children know I'm about to be eaten. They are all being obedient. They are over where they're supposed to. I am the disobedient one about to be eaten and gagging in the water. And I'm like, this is it, Jesus. Then I start confessing all my known sins. <laughs> in between throwing up, I'm trying to clear it up with Jesus. Anything I am repented, Lord Jesus, you know. And then one more time, I'm like, before I'm eaten, let me just see if any of those children that are being obedient have noticed that I am about to die. I pick my head up, and I look one more time, and my husband, all he sees is the white of my eyes. And what I see is... <sighs> Great. Rather than putting your thumb in the air, can you swim a little faster? Like I'm heaving over here, confessing all my known sins, and they're about to eat my little white legs, and you're just... But he does start to swim because he knows I'm in trouble. How many of you know that 
Sometimes when God knows we're in trouble, it might not be just in that second, but he will come to rescue us. If we'll pick our head up out of that mess and look and look, my husband swims over, grabs the back of my, my neck. I think he got my hair too. And I'm like, he didn't let go of my hair. Here I am gagging, about to be eaten. The boy's pulling me by the hair. But how many of you know sometimes if that's all you can get, that's all you can get. Drags me up on the tender, puts me up there. They're throwing cold rags on the back of my body and making me drink bitters of all things. But how many of you know, once I started drinking bitters, I stopped throwing up and I was much better. There's something about being obedient. There's something about being obedient to what you've been told to do when exploring in a place you can't see underneath is really dangerous because those that are giving instructions know you can't see everything. So, Father, we come this morning. We're asking you, Lord, to teach us. Teach us from your word. Show us, Lord, as we just continue down a, a diving experience day. Teach us something about obedience and, and standing on your word and standing on what you tell us to do. No matter what our desires are, cause us to understand that being obedient is so much safer and better than exploring into waters that we can't see. So, Father, open up our, our hearts and our ears to understand by the Spirit of the Lord. And I thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. So let's continue down that little water theme, and let's talk about some deep diving as, and look at a natural experience and gain some spiritual understanding in that. So as I studied diving, because I really did plan to do that someday, fascinated by the, what do I do if I'm in trouble? component. I'm one of those kids that the first thing I do when I go into a restaurant, I'm checking out the food ratings, the health food ratings, and where's the exit sign. I know my way out of this place. I am the person that goes into a hotel room, and before I start unpacking and talking about the, I'm looking for where the exit signs are. What's the little piece of paper on the, ro on the door that says, if you go down the hall that way, that's just me. I am a, a freak about feeling safe. I, um, I'm always conscious of, are the exit signs lit, are they not? And I'm always a, what, what will I do if this happens kind of person? Anybody else kind of like that? Like, I'm planning, what do I do in the event that this happens? Where is the safe place? So one of the tools for a safe route of escape that deep divers use, if they're in a place where they're struggling and they can't see or they feel disoriented, what they'll do, they're taught to follow the bubbles. Hold on to that phrase. We're going to work on that today. They're taught to follow the bubbles. See, sometimes you can dive so deep into the water. Sometimes you can get so deep into the water that all the shades of blue look exactly alike. And I have read that divers in those really dark places where all the shades of blue look alike, all of a sudden they can't tell which way is up. Which way is the way out of this place? There's no east, there's no west. It's like, what do we do if we're in that place and we have no idea whether we're supposed to go up or down? And sometimes a storm can happen, and all of a sudden the sand and the silt can be scurrying around, and they can't see. Sometimes when you can't see, think about it when you're driving on the road and it's raining so hard that you can't see. I don't know if you've ever been, I was in a place just a couple of weeks back, and it was raining so hard, I'm like, I didn't even know how to get over to the shoulder of the road. So when you're in that spot, and how many of you know, think spiritually, how many of you know we can get in a spot where all of a sudden we can't see which way to go? And so when you're on one of those things, and the silt and the sand, they tell you to pause, stand still, st stand firm, and then when it settles, follow the bubbles. Can you put that next picture up for me? So, so when you're diving, well, when you look at that, there's a whole lot of that that looks like it's just the same shade of blue. But look how those bubbles always lead to the top. 
always. They never go in the wrong direction. They always know the way out. Always. And so divers are taught when all else fails, when all else fails, follow the bubbles. Why? Because the bubbles will show you a way of escape. They'll lead you to that place of safety. They're always going to float towards the top. Here's the thing. So you're taught to do that. You're taught to follow the bubbles. But how about there's always a choice? There's always a choice. There is a right way. There is a right way. We always get to choose. I have read stories of divers who ignore their instruments. They ignore what they're supposed to do in training because they're on that quest like I was on that quest. They're just going to roll the dice and see, can I get the next deep dive accomplished that nobody else has put on record? How many of you know that sometimes you can roll the dice like that and be in serious trouble? Like be in serious trouble. You can't ignore what you've been taught to do. There is a way that is right. Now you can explore with that a little if you want to. I tend to be one of those that if God's word says I'm supposed to do this, I'm doing that. I, that's the way I'm doing. See, I totally knew that I was being disobedient. I totally knew. But I was choosing to go in a path because I thought that I was going to come up with something the others were not. Seems like that, isn't it? Come on, work with me this morning. Sense like that. Sometimes we think we're going to get over there and just explore a little bit with this little sin issue. We're just going to swim towards it just a little. We're going to work over there just a little. We're not too far off. We're not too far off what God told us to do. And you can get over and get far enough away from the group and realize, should have done what God told me to do always. Always. See, I reasoned in my head, I'm a good swimmer. And being disobedient, just a little bit of disobedience can't be too bad. You know what a little bit of disobedience does? It leads to the next set of, well, that wasn't too bad. I mean, God didn't, didn't really. And then we, there's a little bit more. And there's a little bit more. And all of a sudden, compromise begins to get in. And we begin to try to negotiate and look at things that we were not to no designed to negotiate with God about at all. I believe right now that we are in very spiritually deep waters in the earth. And I believe that strict obedience to the Word of God, strict obedience to the Word of God, not what somebody says the Word of God says, but what God's Word says. With no compromise, I believe right now that's critical. Sometimes we feel like we can negotiate with God about his word so that we can justify our sin. But you know, God, it was, I, I was born with that, that nature. I was born into a family that watched pornography. I was born into a family that gossips. I was born into, really? And we start trying to negotiate with God, whether it's our sin or maybe other sins that, that people are announcing is no longer really a sin to God. Ever hear any of that? God doesn't really look at that as sin. God's so full of grace. That's really not a sin. Let me tell you, you better go back and check that out with God. Now be checking on what somebody's saying. Remember, God is who he says he is, and he says what he means for his word to say. There's no way around that. Thank God for the Holy Spirit. Can somebody say thank God for the Holy Spirit. Thank God for the Holy Spirit within us that's the dive buddy. I don't know about you, but he does not mind tapping me on the shoulder. Anybody else get a little tap on the shoulder? He does not mind. Now, here's what that looks like when we no longer want the tap of the shoulder. Can you not tap me quite so hard? Like, like, can you tap somebody else a little bit? No, he's dealing with us in a certain area, so he needs to tap us. The prayer needs to be, can you tap me a little harder? So I respond a little quicker, right? He knows the truth. He knows the way to life. We have to follow the bubbles. We don't get to negotiate with God about his commandments. We do not. We do not get to negotiate with God about his commands, but we do get to choose whether or not we want to obey them. Proverbs 14, 12 through 13 out of the message says this, there is a way that looks harmless enough. There's a way. Come on, somebody. There's a way. So I'm over here in the group with, with all the little obedient children, right? 
When I looked out over the ocean, there didn't see anything full of harm over there. There's no harm. It's just pretty waves, right? So I start swimming into disobedience. I made a choice to swim over into the disobedient one all by myself. But I didn't know that under the water was something I couldn't see. There is a way of life that looks harmless enough. Look again. Look again. We need the Holy Spirit to help us look again, to look under the water, to look under the circumstances we're about to link ourselves up to. We're being asked to come and do X, Y, and Z. Have we asked the Holy Spirit? Because he knows what's underneath the water. Look again. It leads straight to hell. Sure, those people appear to have a, a good, or to appear to be having a good time. I'm sure if they had looked over there, I'm swimming, I'm exploring. They probably thought, she's having a good old time over there trying to find the Titanic. But they couldn't see under the water either. Sure, those people appear to be having a good time, but all that laughter will end in heartbreak. We must be led by the Holy Spirit every day to a place of life and holiness. He's the only one that can lead us in the truth and show us the way to safety. And that is contrary to the path that Satan wants to eliminate. Satan's always drawing, whether that's on the news or our social groups or at work, He's always drawing us into a place that is contrary to the word of the Lord. But the Holy Spirit knows that is not a place that gives life. But again, we get to choose. We get to choose. Let's look at two New Testament passages that talk about this. Romans 8 says, So then, brethren, I like to add sisterin. So then, brethren and sisterin, we are under obligation. But not to the flesh. Come on, somebody. We're not obligated to live according to the flesh. See, there again, we can start excusing what happens. Like, my family does this. All the workers at my office cuss. They all tell dirty, do dirty jokes. I just kind of fall into it. No, you're not obligated. We're not obligated to live by the flesh. We're not obligated to act the way people that are not saved. We're not obligated to live like that or be like that. We're not obligated to that. We're not obligated to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you are living according to the flesh, you must die. But if you are living by the Spirit, you are putting to death. You, 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 and you. You are putting to death the deeds of the body. Don't make excuses. I've taught you that. Don't make excuses for your sin life or you get to keep them. You get to keep, you like lying, you get to keep it. You, get, you make excuses for your sin. You get to keep it. Annihilate it. It is not safe. It is not a way that leads to life. But if you're putting to death the deeds of the body, you will live for all who are being led by the Spirit of God. I, that, I want them to be in that group. How about that? Like, I should have been over there with you. But I want to be led by the Spirit of God. These are sons of God. For you have not received a spirit of slavery. Living to fear again, the fear of eternal punishment. We haven't received that. When we got Jesus Christ, we got set free from that. We didn't receive that. We're not being adopted back into a place of fear of eternal torment. But you have received a spirit of adoption, come on church, by which we cry out, Abba, Father. We have become children of the Most High God through the saving grace of Jesus Christ. Come on, somebody. Thank you, Jesus. Paul is talking here about righteous living and about following the Spirit's leading to do what God has commanded us to do in His Word. Jesus left the Holy Spirit. He expressed, I'm going away. I'm going away, but you're going to be in deep waters in 2023. And I'm going to leave for you someone that will guide you into all truth. Now, yes, that, that's talking about the truth of God's Word, but it's also talking about the truth of leading us in a path of victory so we're not bound and occupied by our sin life. We're not back into a place of slavery to our sin lives. But we are obedient to God's Word. I don't believe that we can successfully navigate the darkness of 2023 without following the leading of the Holy Spirit and quickly obeying. If you don't hear anything else I hear, hear that. And we can't excuse it with, well, Pastor Kathy, I don't know what the Word of God is. Every day, every day, every day, you need to be in the Word of the Lord hearing, hearing so that you can quickly obey the voice of the Holy Spirit. Here's the second one out of the New Testament. Galatians 5, 18 says, but if you are led by the Spirit, you're not under the law. 
Remember, we are no longer under the curse of the law and death. And yet at times, at times, we can easily and slowly begin to compromise on the very freedom from sin that we've been given. Galatians 5 and 1 reminds us it is for freedom that Christ came to set us free. Now, we like that part. It's for freedom. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, that's right. Thank you, Jesus. It's for freedom that he came to set us free. The part B revert comes to us. I will stand firm then and no longer let myself be burdened again with a yoke of slavery. I will stand firm then. So how do we stand firm when lawlessness is abounding? How can we do this when there's so much darkness? How are we standing firm, Pastor Kathy? Quick obedience to the Holy Spirit. And you've got to remember, the Holy Spirit speaks to each one of us. Yes, we want everybody to come to, work, to church on Sundays and hear a word from the Lord. I mean, we want that. We want you to hear about God every Sunday. But there is that daily thing between you and the Holy Ghost that has to keep us to a place of accountability. Stand firm then and no longer let yourself be burdened again with the yoke of slavery. Follow the bubbles. Follow the bubbles, right? He knows the way out. Follow the bubbles. And these two passages, being led by the Spirit, is being contrasted to being led by our own fleshly impulses. It's referring to the battle between flesh and spirit. How many of you know this, that the flesh is weak? Am I the only one? Okay, three hands. How many? Let me ask that again. Okay, let me see if I can get beyond the light here. How many of you know the flesh is weak? The Spirit is willing. The Spirit is willing to lead you out of that place where you're accepting your sin nature. He is willing. The flesh is weak. But we have to line ourselves up with, with what the Holy Spirit's saying and follow the bubbles. See, we can look at a way and we're not sure, is that way really leading to death? I mean, everybody's talking about that on the news and that's all on TikTok and that, that's all over. That really can't be leading to death. I mean, it's all over TikTok. Surely, surely that can't be leading to death. And the Holy Spirit's like, <laughs> follow the bubbles. Newsflash, <laughs> follow the bubbles. In both these contexts, Paul is really saying, don't follow the sinful desires of the flesh, but follow what the Spirit wants you to do. Because if you follow where the Spirit is leading you, you get to life eternal life in him. But how many of you know Jesus came that we would have an abundant life here? When we're walking in our own sin issues and living in that, making excuses, we won't have an abundant life here. We don't have an abundant life. We get all caught up in shame and guilt and all those things. You know what we need to do? Pause, stop, and follow the bubbles. God says in Ezekiel 36, he says, I will put my spirit within you. I'll put my spirit within you, and I will cause you to walk in my statutes. God knew he was going to need something inside of us to stay with us no matter where. I'll put my, my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes. See, God knew that we could never navigate through the darkness of 2023 without the spirit of God living within us. The thing is we have to recognize that it's his voice. And when we are in a place of being disobedient or in a place where the shades of blue are all the same, we have to stop and pause and say, Holy Spirit, what's the way out of this mess? And guess what? Then all we have to do is follow the bubbles because he is willing where we are weak. See, here's the plan. Listen and obey. Pastor Kathy, it can't be that easy. Listen and obey follow the bubbles. Listen and obey. The flesh is weak. Not only is he trying to get us just to get away from that mess, he's trying to get us into a place of repentance, a quick spot with the Lord where we repent quickly. We can never conquer and stand firm without him. But Satan won't give up easily, will he? He's not going to. Isaiah 60, this is one of my favorite hangout passages right now. Isaiah's prophesying probably 3,000 years ago, for behold, darkness will cover the earth. Satan's never going to let us live without coming to try to draw us to a place of compromise. Come on. Draw us, draw us, draw us, draw us. Get into that play, place where the shades of blue all look the same. Drawing us. For behold, darkness will cover the earth. 
and gross darkness the people. It's not the same phrase. The Hebrew meaning of the word darkness there is misery, destruction, death, sorrow, wickedness, obscurity. All the colors look the same. All those places. We don't even really know. Wickedness, destruction, death, sorrow, lawlessness. It said, Isaiah's prophecy, 3,000 years ago, darkness is going to cover the earth. But then that gross darkness will cover the people. That's what I felt like the enemy was trying to do this morning. That means to throw a blanket over the people of the earth so that no light can penetrate. All that stuff's going on in the earth. All that death, destruction, misery, it's all happening. But if he can throw a blanket so that no light can penetrate, then he feels like he can keep us from getting out from underneath that death, darkness, destruction. When there's no repentance in our heart and we embrace disobedience, our hearts can become cold and callous. We get to choose. Guys, keep short accounts with people. I, I actually repented to somebody on Friday for something I did a year ago. But the Holy Spirit brought it up to me like three and four times. In a two, and I'm, so when I texted that person, they're like, you don't owe me an apology. I'm like, I didn't ask you if I needed to owe you an apology. I wasn't asking. I'm being obedient. I'm being obedient. Come on, guys. I'm being obedient. When the Holy Spirit's speaking to us over and over and over, let's, let's be quick to do what he's telling us to do so our hearts don't get cold and callous because we can actually begin to deny the power of the Holy Spirit to lead us to truth. He is strong enough to get us to that place of truth. But sometimes we can begin to deny the I was born that way. I'm always going to be this way. No. Thank you, Mr. Ralph. No, no, and no. We can't go in a place of making compromise about the things that are keeping us heading in a wrong path away from safety. Need the Holy Spirit. Let's look at 2 Timothy 3, 15, 3, 1 through 5 out of the voice. And know this, in the last days, times will be hard. Can somebody say amen? Times will be hard. You see, the world will be filled with narcissistic, money-grabbing, pretentious, arrogant, and abusive people. Filled with it. Narcissistic, money-grabbing, pretentious, arrogant, and abusive people. God help us not to find us in this list. God help us. They will rebel against their parents and will be ungrateful, unholy, uncaring, cold-hearted, accusing, without restraint savage and haters of anything good expect them to be treacherous reckless swollen with self-importance and giving to loving pleasure more than they love God even though they may look or act like godly people come on somebody even though they may look like they are godly or they're acting like they are godly they're not what are they they have denied his power what are they doing? What, what, what are we doing? We're, when they're, we're in this list. What are we? We're making excuses for our sins. We've denied that the Holy Spirit can lead us out of that. All we got to do is follow the bubbles, and we're denying that. I tell you, stay away from the likes of these. Is this what Isaiah saw 3,000 years ago? Is this what he saw, that darkness would cover the earth like this and gross darkness would cover the people? Is this what he saw? This is what happens when we no longer choose to follow the bubbles and we choose to, to follow our own fleshly desires and we make excuses for them. But in contrast to that, I want to show you a story from the Bible out of Second Chronicles where there was a whole bunch of following the bubbles and oh, it landed differently. It landed differently. Let's look at this out of Second Chronicles 20, 1 through 30. Now, we'll let you know, I did cut and paste a little bit of this. Not much because it's such a glorious story. I want to leave you in a place where you're like, I want, to be, I want to be in that story. And guess what? You can be. So there's war surrounding the nations, starting in, in uh, chapter 20, verse 1. After this, the armies of the Moabites, Ammonites, and some of the Meunites. Can I just pause right there? Those little Ike people, they're mean. They're bad folk. <laughs> Like if you study the Prizites and the Jebusites and the Onites and the Imites and the Ha-Ha-Mites and the everybody might, the, you do a study. Go do a study. I'm challenging you. Like I did this. I spent two months studying the, the little Ike people. They're talking about anger, confusion, lust, greed. You look at what their names are. They are bad folk. 
So after this, all the armies of the bad people declared war on Jehoshaphat. Messengers came and told Jehoshaphat, a vast army, not a wee bit of people, not one little person, a vast army from Edom is marching against you from the Dead Sea. And Jehoshaphat was terrified. Now, I would be too. Can we just be honest this morning? I would have been. And look what he did. But look, in, in his fear, look what he did. He's terrified. And he begged the Lord for guidance. Like, I'm about to be in deep trouble here. Can you give me some bubbles to follow? Come on, work with me. Can you give me some bubbles to follow? He also ordered everyone in Judah to begin fasting. So we introduced a vast army, and we got a bad, I a bad issue. And he's like, give me some guidance, Lord. Let me follow the bubbles, and let's fast and seek your voice. So people from all the towns of Judah came to Jerusalem to seek the Lord's help. Jehoshaphat stood before the community of Judah and Jerusalem in front of the new courtyard at the temple of God. He prayed, O oh Lord, God of our ancestors, you alone are the God who is in heaven. You are the ruler of all the kingdoms of the earth. You are powerful, you're mighty, and no one can stand against you. Oh God, did you not drive out those who lived in this land when your people Israel arrived? And did you not give this land forever to the descendants of your friend Abraham? See, he's reminding God of his word. Come on, church. God is not intimidated by the fact that you remind him of his word. He loves it. Because you know what it shows him? You know his word. You can't remind somebody of something you don't know. You know God's word. You don't mind reminding him. I remind him of that. He's not intimidated by that. Didn't you do this for your friend Abraham? Your people settled here and built this temple to honor your name. They said, whenever we are faced with any calamity, such as war, plague, famine, anybody heard any of that lately, we can come to stand in your presence before this temple where your name is honored. We can cry out to you. Listen, we can cry out to you, and you will hear us and rescue us. God is faithful to his word, church. He's faithful to his word. In the midst of all that's going on in 2023, we can come to the house of the Lord, stand before him, cry out to him. He will hear, and he will rescue us. And now see what the armies of Ammon, Moab, Mo those are the bad people again. Do you see what they're doing? You would not let our ancestors invade those nations when they left Egypt. So they went around them and did not destroy them. You remember that out of Exodus. He took them around and he didn't lead them through the short path. He took them the long path because they didn't know anything about war. They only knew how to make bricks. Ain't God good. Sometimes he's going to take us a long path because he's no, we don't know about war. We're going to, we, we'll learn. But all we know is this right now. And so he said, you took them around. So the, they, those little giants, those bad guys are still in the land. Now see how they reward us? For they have come to throw us out of the land which you gave us as an Oh, Lord, won't you stop them? We are powerless against this mighty army that's about to attack us. We do not know what to do. But we're looking for some bubbles. We're looking for some bubbles. As all the men of Judah, now watch this. It's about, the story's about to get really sweet right here. As all the men of Judah stood before the Lord with their littles, their wives, and their children. Come on, men. Bring in your children and your wives to the house of the Lord to pray and fast. And come on, where are my men this morning? When all the men of Judah stood before the Lord with their littles and their wives and their children, the Spirit of the Lord came. Something about all the men bringing their families to church and the Spirit of the Lord came. Spirit of the Lord came. Come on, come on. Spirit of the Lord came upon one of the men standing there. His name was Jehaziel, son of Zechariah, a Levite who was a descendant of Asaph. He said, listen up, people. Whoop, whoop. Not exactly like that. Listen, all you people of Judah and Jerusalem. Listen, King Jehoshaphat. This is what the Lord says. They've prayed. They've fasted. They've come to the house of the Lord. They're coming with their families. They're coming in unity. And God is about to speak. He's about to say, I'm going to give you a, a path with some bubbles. Follow the bubbles, boys. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged by this mighty army, for the battle is not yours but God's. Tomorrow, march out against them. 
tomorrow. Like, you get up. I'm going to give you a plan. You get up tomorrow. You got a real issue. This is a vast army. You get up tomorrow. You get up tomorrow. You get up tomorrow and fall those bubbles. Get up and march out against them, but you will not need to even fight. Come on. But you will not even need to fight. Take your positions. Do what I tell you to do. Follow the bubbles. Take up your positions. Then stand. Stand firm then. Then stand still and watch the Lord's victory. He is with you, O people of Judah and Jerusalem. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Go out against them tomorrow, for the Lord is with you. Some about hearing a word from the Lord. Then King Jehoshaphat bowed low to, with his face to the ground. Come on. And all the people of Judah did the same. They're worshiping the Lord. We're we going to follow the bubbles. And now we got the plan. We got the plan of escape. We're going to follow the bubbles. We're going to stand here now and worship. Early the next morning, the army of Judah went out to the wilderness of Tekoa. On the way, to Jeru uh, on the way Jehoshaphat stopped and said, listen to me. He's going to remind them, this is what God said. Listen to me, all you people of Judah and Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, and you will be able to stand firm. Believe in the prophets, and you will succeed. After consulting the people, the king appointed singers to walk ahead of the army, singing to the Lord and praising him for his holy splendor. Right? This is what they sang. Give thanks to the Lord. His faithful love endures all the way to the year 2023. Come on, right? All the way to year 2023 and beyond. Now, here's my very favorite part of the story coming up. Favorite. So we've seen a real issue. We've seen a king that comes to pray. All the men come and bring their families. We've seen the Lord answer. We've had the king remind them. And then watch what happens. Mm, 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 mm. Verse 22. At the very moment... At the very moment, at the very moment they began to sing and give praise, the Lord caused the armies of the bad guys to start fighting among themselves. They're following the bubbles. They're beginning to worship and pray, and the Lord has all the bad guys start fighting each other. The armies of the bad guys turned against the allies from elsewhere, and they killed every one of them. Ain't none survived. After they had destroyed the army of Syria, they began attacking each other. Come on, guys, are you watching? So when the army of Judah arrived at the lookout point in the wilderness, all they see are dead bodies lying everywhere. As far as they could see, not one of the enemies had escaped. Something about following the bubbles. Something about following those bubbles. King Jehoshaphat and his men went out to gather the plunder. They found vast amounts of equipment, clothing, and other burials, more than they could carry. They were so much plunder that it took them three days to collect it. On the fourth day, they gathered in the Valley of Blessing. In the Valley of Blessing, which got its name that day because the people praised and thanked the Lord. It is still called the Valley of Blessing today. Then all the men returned to Jerusalem, and Jehoshaphat leading them overjoyed that the Lord had given them victory over their enemies. They marched into Jerusalem to the music of harps and lyres and trumpets, and they proceeded to the temple of the Lord. When all the surrounding kingdoms heard that the Lord himself, that the Lord himself, that the Lord himself had fought against the enemies of Israel, the fear of God came over them. See, when people see you, see, get, see you get delivered, all of a sudden, they began to have some kind of understanding. Like They know you grow up in that kind of way. They know about your bad temper and carrying on. And all of a sudden, you ain't bad, no God, no bad temper anymore. But God, they're like, you used to be, I had an encounter with the Holy Spirit, following my, my, my way up out of this mess. And that does not honor the Lord. And they're like, wow, they begin to take notice. It came over him, and, and the people heard, right? And then, so Jehoshaphat's kingdom was at peace, for his God had given him rest on every side. Can I give you some hope this morning? Anybody like hope? See, sometimes we can sit here and we say, Pastor Kay, that, that, was, that was good. I, I wish that I could always, when I, when I 
have this issue in my life and I, I recognize it and I decide that I could really pray and stand and go get a word from the Lord and really, f I wish I could do that, but I'm weak. Like I really, 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 really struggle with that. I want to show you Romans 8, give you a little hope this morning. And the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. Oh no, I should have heard more than Miss Yvonne say, thank you, Lord. Either y'all are in a better place than me, I'm telling you. And the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. When we get serious about wanting to live in a place of life and safety and abundance in the Holy Spirit, and we are really struggling. We're struggling. We got Thanksgiving coming up. We don't want half our family to come. We got a boss that's acting like some kind of wild, crazy maniac person. And we don't want to do it. We don't want to murder him. He might not be saved. Right? And we really don't know what to do. But the Holy Spirit does. He does. But just like King Jehoshaphat, are we willing to go and stand and say, I'm in trouble. I need help. For example, we don't know what God wants us to pray for, but the Holy Spirit prays for us with groanings that we cannot exp be expressed in words. Pray in the Spirit. If you can't get up of this situation, you can't seem to find peace with your family or in your co if you can't seem to find a place of life and health again, pray in the Spirit. Pray in the Spirit. Pray in the Spirit. We don't know what God wants us to pray for, but the Holy Spirit prays for us with groanings that cannot be expressed in words. And the Father who knows all hearts knows what the Spirit is saying. I love this, for the Spirit pleads for us believers in harmony with God's own will. He knows and he has a way out. Will you put that last picture up? Look at here. Here we are with the Holy Spirit. There's a whole lot of shades going on of blue there. And that I've been told that there are times when it can be so dark. The diver can be in such a dark spot that you can't even see the bubbles. Now, when you've been taught to follow the bubbles and you're in such a deep, dark spot that all of a sudden you can't see the bubbles, you must have the Holy Spirit light a torch. Can you put that picture back up for me? You must have the Holy Spirit light a torch. Because, see, they'll say, in a dark, 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 dark place, do go ahead and expose one of your torches. Because once you get some light on it, you can see the bubbles. You can see the bubbles. So sometimes, especially in a deep dive, they always partner up. How about that dive buddy of the Holy Ghost for us? That's a good, he's like the best. He is the best dive companion ever. Because when I might be the one being disobedient and swimming to that side, he's going to reach over and grab me by the back of my neck and say, uh-uh, sis. Uh-uh, sis. Come on now. That's fleshly desire. Come on, sis. Come on, sis. Come on, sis. Let's get back over here and be obedient to what you were told to do. Amen, church? Amen. I'm going to tell you, this is a season of great darkness. And the enemy is putting gross darkness on people. He's trying to blanket people. But that's why I said, I'm so glad to see you stand up this morning and fight through that. So glad to see you get up over the top of that. Now, I want to show you something. can't follow the bubbles or follow the leading of the Holy Spirit if we have a, if we don't have the Holy Spirit in us. See, if you're not saved this morning, the Bible says, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. If you're not saved this morning, Holy Spirit's not indwelling you. He, you won't be able to follow the bubbles. You're going to be like the little diver over there that can't see the bubbles at all. The Holy Spirit wants to come to everyone in this room today. Now, you know, it's not just a, oh, I think I am saved. Maybe I am saved. I hope I'm saved. No, you need to know that when you close your eyes, if you were to close your eyes in death right now, right now in this second, if you were to stop breathing in this second, will you open your eyes in the presence of God? Because life will continue after death. See, we need the Holy Spirit to come and be a part of our lives. We need 
an infilling of the Holy Spirit. So if you would be willing to say, be bold this morning. If I close my eyes right now, Pastor Kathy, I don't know that I would open them in the presence of God. Would you put your hand in the air? I'm not going to ask you to close your eyes. This is a big statement. Anybody in the room? So I trust that everybody in this room is saved today then. I felt the Holy Spirit say to me, maybe you don't want to raise your hand. Maybe you don't want to raise your hand. I get that. Can I ask you at the end when we have our altar workers come up, would you be bold enough because you don't want to just walk out of here and say, I, I think I am. Uh, I, I'm okay with that. No, you want to walk out of this room knowing assuredly that you are a believer and if you closed your eyes in death right now, you'd open them in the presence of God. Because you see, for us as believers, then we have the infilling of the Holy Spirit, right? And so then when we're in our issues, what do we do? We go to him and we're saying, I'm in trouble. I'm in trouble and I know it. This behavior, this attitude, this thing that's going on in my eye, this cannot continue. It is an abomination to God. And what does the Holy Spirit do? Well, all right. It worked at home with blowing last night, but he's got his own journey, right? So we just, what do we do then? We just begin to follow the bubbles because he knows the way out, right? But it does take a choice. It is a choice. I love that. It is a choice. And then if we mess up, he just does it again and again and again and it, because he wants to lead us to a place of safety that is his heart his heart is that none should perish and we all follow the bubbles but we have to choose to do that here's what I want to do today I know because even in my own life in all of our lives there are issues where where we struggle because our flesh is weak every one of us thank you Every one of us, we struggle with our, our weaknesses. Can I encourage you? I'm going to have the altar workers come in just a minute. In fact, you can go ahead and start making your way up here. And what I want to do is if you really need somebody to agree with you in prayer, because you know that the Holy Spirit has bubbles, you know that he wants to lead you, but, but it's tough. I want you to come and let them pray and agree with you this morning that the power of of the Holy Spirit will come in such, in, on you in such a, a, a firm and strong way that you walk up out of here encouraged. You're going to go to the valley of blessing. There's going to be rest and peace because we're not designed to carry that stuff. The Holy Spirit wants to help us in our weakness to follow the bubbles. So these altar workers will be here to pray for you. But here's what I want you to do. I want everybody to stand. And we're going to begin to sing about the Holy Spirit. I want to encourage you to do this. I want to encourage you, if you're not coming up for prayer, I want you to stand and, and really just begin. I want you to worship because the words of the song are like a prayer. They're like a prayer. You can begin to worship. And what I really want you to do is I want you to begin to pray in the Spirit. I want you to sing a little bit, pray a little bit, and I want you to sing in the Spirit. I want you to sing in the Spirit. I want you to pray a little more, and I want you to sing in the Spirit. I want to release the anointing of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, lift up your hands, church. Holy Spirit, I release you over your people. We don't receive any blanket of darkness. Gross darkness will cover the people, but we release it out of this place today. We pull it up off of each other, Lord. We come and we say we surrender to the will and the anointing of the Holy Ghost. We do not want to walk in a place of disobedience. We walk, want to walk in obedience as children of God. We thank you this day that you help us in our weaknesses. That you help us in our weaknesses as we walk towards the valley of blessing and follow the bubbles.